It's not easy, but let, let me tell you what is the problem. And once you understand the problem, then you're going to understand why we're working on a solution. You have a, a, a big region. Uh, you have uh, cities from Roma to Bronzeville, from Miguel Alemán to Matamoros. And when you put it all together, you have close to 3.5 million uh, people. That's great. You have uh, 14 international bridges. You have seven international airports. You have four uh, ocean ports. I mean, there is no region in the U.S. that has all these advantages. And when you go to India or China or Japan or wherever you're going, trying to promote your city, it doesn't make sense for the, for the investors. If you are, I, I, I hate to say it, but if you do any city in the valley and you go to any country in the world and you are talking about your city, I'm sorry, you are too small for them to care. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Joaquin Spammer, um, <clears throat> Commodities Integrated Logistics. Tell us about your company, what you do, and I think a lot of people are excited to hear about how you started because it's been a long journey. Yeah, well, we started about 35 years ago. My first business was a construction business. We built warehouses in the city of Hidalgo. Uh, we started back in 1988, and we did several warehouses, and then I built a warehouse for myself. So we opened um, a forwarding company uh, that is called now CIL, um, back 32 years ago. Um, it's been a long journey. And, um, we've been blessed. We were very blessed by uh, the U.S., Mexico and Canada signing the NAFTA agreement. And of course, everything in the Valley kept on growing. Yeah. And we were growing with. Uh, so we've been in the logistics business for 32 years. We mainly do agricultural products. Uh, we are the largest uh, distributors of cotton from the U.S. into Mexico. Largest. The largest. And we handle about 40% of all cotton from Mexico to the rest of the world. And northbound, we have a produce company. We do the service the, the super, supermarkets in the U.S., and that business has been uh, growing as well. So when you, were, when you first started out from, you know, um, 35 years ago, you said 32 years ago, you started SIL. When, how did you stay motivated to keep going? Because when you start a business, I mean, people think, oh, look, everything, everything's going good for them. But behind closed doors, I mean, you're... You know, there is always a challenge. Always. Always, always a, a challenge. And um, I'm very ambitious. Uh, uh, I'm a deal junkie. I like to, to, to accomplish uh, what I said my, my, my goals to be. So it, I don't work for money. I work for a, I work in basically to accomplish uh, everything that I want to accomplish. No, it's um, it's a lot of fun. It has it, 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 it has it, it has seen, always been um, profitable. Yeah, but it has always been fun. And so it took you a while to finally build your first warehouse, right? And and since then, how has uh, building warehouses in South Texas? I mean, if you could go back and 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 pick a different market, would you or would you stay in this market and why? No, I would stay in this market. I wish I had more money back then. <laughs> but we, I I built my bit first building when I was twenty seven, and and from there we grew from twenty thousand square feet to one point two million square feet in thirty two years. So it's been great. Uh, I love it. Uh, this market has been growing thanks to to the um, treaties with Mexico, and I think it's going to keep, keep keep on growing. 
So speaking of, of treaties and things taking place with Mexico, you know, right now, the term nearshoring, it's, it's a buzzword. Everyone's using it. We, um, our neighbors to the south, uh, the state of Nuevo León, they have really, really taken advantage of the opportunity of nearshoring. Tamaulipas um, is, is trying to take advantage of it, but not so much. Based on your experience, what do you think has to happen for Tamaulipas to take advantage of what's happening with nearshoring? We all need to follow uh, Nuevo León. When you see the governor going everywhere, promoting the, the city and the state, that's when things happen. Yeah. Because there is a lot of competition. You have competition in Guatemala, Vietnam, La India. Everyone, everywhere wants to bring industry to their region. And and uh, nearshoring sounds really nice, but if you don't go out there and invite uh, this industry to come to the valley, we're never going to get any any industry down here. Yeah. I mean, you need to go out there, and that's what the the with the governor of Nuevo León is doing. I think that's what the go government of Tamaulipas needs to do, and I think that's what we all should be doing here in the valley. And so, you know, one group, the Rio Grande Valley, it sounds great to have one group, but obviously we don't have one group. We have many groups, probably with the same ambition, but they have different ways of getting there. Most recently, um, the Border Trade Alliance is something that you are part of, that you've led. Um how can the border trade allowance, or what are you all doing to make sure that the region is working as one? Well, let me tell you what I've been doing as president of the Border Trade Alliance in Mexico. No? There is a, a U.S. chapter and a Mexican chapter. I'm the president of the Mexican chapter. And what we've been doing is changing the, the, the Mexican BTA to emulate the U.S. Uh, BTA. What is that? Last Monday, we have the first meeting of our of governmental affairs committee in Mexico City. Now we have a full-time uh, personnel. We have three people working out of Mexico City, uh, getting getting us closer to the government. As you know, the government in Mexico just, uh, the new government in Mexico was just elected, and we need to be there. We need to help the, the new Mexican congressmen and the new senators to better understand what's happening at the border. Yes. That's our job. The BTA wants to bring a better understanding of the challenges that we live every day at the border. And with this new committee, I think we're going to be able to accomplish that. Yeah, that's that's extremely interesting. Um, you know, why reinvent the wheel, right? Whatever works, focus on that. It has been working very well in the U.S., and I think that uh, we are doing the same in Mexico, and we're... Our membership has grown a lot, and with all these changes, I think we're going to accomplish uh, our goals. And so the Border Trade Alliance uh, in, in the U.S., how do you work with them hand-in-hand? Hand? Uh, we, we, just next uh, two weeks from now, we have our uh, annual meeting. Um, of course, the B Mexican BTA is part of the U.S. BTA and vice versa. Um, we are going to Washington from the 23rd to the 28th. We're going to have meetings with um, the the full BTA team plus Select USA. Now we also going to have some meetings with uh, Index, the National uh, Manufacturing Association in, Mex in Mexico. <clears throat> it's it seems um, it seems. Like a little crazy at how much you have to work to really uh, grow a region. And, and I think a lot of business owners and people that have invested in South Texas are very thankful for groups like yours, uh, the various groups. The other group that we're going to talk about is the Prosperity Task Force, specifically the CEO group. I mean, you all are people in the private sector that are coming together and saying, okay, we have to take a stand because no one else is going to do it for us. No, well, the, my personal opinion is BTA, Index, AmCham, American Chamber of Commerce, the Select USA, everybody's playing a role. Yeah. And we need to 
to play with them. We need to work with them. We need to be close to them and make sure that whatever they're doing, uh, the Rio Grande Valley has a, a place yes. in the arguments and or the discussions. That's very important. Um, it's not me. It's, I, believe, I believe every businessman down here in the Rio Grande Valley, they need to participate. And having said that, if we go to the Prosperity Task Force, that's basically the same. You have a group of investors, businessmen, uh, um, corporate CEOs that are looking for the, uh, to to improve the quality of life and the, the growth of the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, we we don't see ourselves as a group that knows exactly what needs to be done. We see ourselves as a group of private of the private individuals coming together to help the IDOs, the organizations, to accomplish their goals. Yeah, I we don't want to tell them what to do. I think what they're doing in in every in each one of the different economic development organizations, I think they're doing it right. I think they they, they just need to have better synergy with the rest of the groups, and that's what we're trying to accomplish. I think every economic development organization, I mean, wants to be in front of the CEO group. I mean, I can think of a lot of people that would want to be in, in front of the CEO group. I mean, just to know, I mean, hey, these are all of the movers and shakers in South Texas, you know, and 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 we care. So um, right now, one of the agenda items for the CEO task force is is obviously coming up with a name right? What are we going to call ourselves and how are we going to brand ourselves and, um, and how do we execute, right? You all have been going over that mission. How do we do it? You want to talk to us a little bit about the process? Yes, it's not easy, but let, let me tell you what is the problem. And once you understand the problem, then you're going to understand why we're working on a solution. You have a, a, a big region. Uh, you have uh, cities from Roma to Bronzeville, from Miguel Aleman to Matamoros. And when you put it all together, you have close to 3.5 million uh, people. That's great. You have uh, 14 uh, international bridges. You have seven international airports. You have four uh, ocean ports. I mean, there is no region in the U.S. that has all these advantages. And a spaceport. And we have, I mean, we, are, we <laughs> basically have the door to the space. It's right here, it's great. The problem is that everybody is working their own little city or their own yeah, uh, the area, their their own the, the little area. And when you go to India or China or Japan or wherever you're going, trying to promote your city, it doesn't make sense for the for the investors. If you are, I, I, I hate to say it, but if you do any city in the valley and you go to any country in the world and you're talking about your city i'm sorry you are too small for them to care yeah and you can't even the cities you know we had mayor jim darling on and he said you know in order to get some of these big companies not one city can offer the incentives uh or the infrastructure that they need because they're just too big the region could of course. but not one city yes and i went with keith patrick and the mdc and we have gone with the city of far with Victor and Janie and with Steve in West. Like we have, we work with all the EDCs and we have gone we uh, on trade missions everywhere. And and it's difficult to explain to all these investors what you are representing, because when you say, well, we are part of McAllen, but Harlingen is also involved. And you know what? We have Brownsville, but Reynosa is part of that group, <laughs> and and it takes. 30 minutes, 45 minutes just to make them understand who we are. <laughs> yeah. And that's before you start explaining about all the advantages of being in that region. Yeah. So that's the problem. The problem is that when you market Reynosa or Harley you know, or any city independently, it's not attractive. But when you market that region as a whole, then it becomes really attractive. So that's the problem. What is the solution? The solution is the same solution that by uh, uh, border plex border plex found for Ciudad Juarez, El Paso, oh, and yes. Santa Teresa. Yes. They did it. We are not invented the wheel. They already did, uh, it has been done before, and they did a great job. 
Now, whatever you go, you talk about the border place, they know exactly what the region is located. We need to do the same. So the, the Prosperity Task Force, in order to help the different NGOs in the valley, they come up with a project of rebranding the region. And they, they, they have, we've had a lot of focus groups, a lot of people from STC, UTRGB, A&M, different uh, EDOs, COSTEP, Adam has been leading the, the, the initiative, uh, Danny Silva with RGB Partnership. Everybody has done their small part in order to accomplish this solution. And they come up with 50 names. Out of the 15 names, we found one that is easy, easy to hear. It means the same in English. It means the same in Spanish. It's a, it's, it's a good brand. What is it? Rioplex. Rioplex. A Rioplex a, this emulates border plex. It, it brings it down to the valley. A, a, I think it's a, a we think it is a great brand name for the region. What, what is the, what is the idea behind this? That every EDO, wh whoever they are, um, any organization that is trying to promote the valley, to keep on promoting their city, um, and. We both use the brand of the of uh, Rio, Pla Rio Place for the region, and that Josh Cortez, who initiated all these uh, um, initiatives, uh, 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 describes it very well. What he says is, let's invite people to the mall, the mall being the region, and once the people come to the mall, let's try to make sure that they buy something in your in your yeah. store. So. Nobody's going to buy something in your store if they don't come to the mall. Yeah. So we all need to chip in, promote the region, promote Rio Plex, bring investors, bring companies, bring industry to the valley, to what we call, I like to call it the, the Rio Grande Valley Industrial Revolution. Bring <laughs> people to the valley, and once they're here, make sure that they do something in your city. Yes. Don't let them go... To another market. The, yes, you see, that, that, that analogy of um, the shopping mall. The shopping mall makes a lot of sense. No, it, it really does. It really okay. does. So, you know, we got to think like we're one landlord and one of our, as long as our tenants are successful, right? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. And, and now, what is, what is the shopping mall doing for, the, for all the stores inside? Just giving them a, a brand name. Yeah. They're giving them a exposure. A platform. A platform. That's yes. that's what we're trying to do. I'm not trying to come into your city or to your EDO, to the Economic Development Corporation of any of the cities and tell them what to do. That's not what we... We're not asking for money. Yeah. We don't want to tell you what to do. The only thing that we want is for everybody to work with one another. Participate. Participate to bring more business to the area. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, and, and, you know, obviously, you know, the city of McAllen, um, you know, was the first really established city, and it benefited the cities around McAllen that McAllen grew, because then FAR grows, then Edinburgh grows. And so if all of our cities are continuing to grow, the smaller cities will continue to have growth as well, and there's there's opportunity for everyone. I agree. Definitely. And, and we think, um, let, let me um, just explain myself a little bit further. I think that each one of them has the, uh, the, a purpose uh, for the whole region. The, for example, Coastal. They are doing something very good with um, all the site selectors. Yes. That's, yeah. that's their goal. They're we need to support them. We need to support them. We all need to support them. Yes. All the other EDOs should be supporting Coastal. The same with the RGB partnership. Yes. They have a different goal. They, they like more the commercial side. Retail. The retail. They, they are very good. Uh, um, um, They're a good partner to have. It's a good partner to have. Yeah. The port of Brunswick is the yes. fastest growing port in the, re, in, the, in the nation. 
is the is bringing a lot of business to the valley. We are all getting the benefit of it. We need to support the pro, pro, Port of Brownville. So every one of them is doing a, a, a thing completely different from one another. Yeah. But let me explain you, explain you what the problem is. Hmm. No problem. Yeah, yesterday I drove by uh, the Rio Grande LNG, the construction <laughs> site, and we, we took, oh my gosh, and you, you look at the parking lot. How many jobs, and those are good paying construction jobs. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of vehicles out there. I have a friend that was building 62 uh, the pa- apartments in Broadville. Uh-huh. He got, got leased uh-huh. before he finished. Yes, yes. It's great. Yes. But let me tell you a problem that I, we see here in the Valley. Uh, you have a, um, it, it was, I was told that the annual budget in between all the ED, EDOs in the Valley is about $115 million. So so just to to make it clear, the, all the economic development organizations in South Texas, right, McAllen EDC, Edinburgh EDC, Harlingen EDC, have a total budget of $115 million annually. Annually. Now, wait. Not wait, only, there's more. There's more. <laughs> because you also have on the Mexican side all the budgets that they use for economic development. And then you have the private sector. You have the banks spending money every year in economic development. You have companies like MAN, like Trancasa, all of the companies that are actually putting, we have a budget. Yes. We, in my company, we spend about $700,000 a year in economic development. Wow. When you put it all together, the private, the U.S. side, and the Mexican side, you're probably looking at $140 million a year. The numbers are huge. And now, that money, I don't say that that money is, is not well spent. What I'm saying is it can be spent better. Of course. And let me give you another, an, um, a good comparison. Avocados from Mexico, the annual budget is $55 million. Wow. And with $55 million, they put ads in the Super Bowl, and they have placed the brand all over the world. Million dollar thirty second commercials, yeah, and they're doing it, and they have it works. Been, it works. They have been extremely successful. If you go to Dubai or you are in Singapore and you talk about avocados from Mexico, they know what you're talking about. So why, if we put all of our efforts together, yes, under one brand name, yes, we may be able to accomplish more than what the avocados from Mexico is accomplish accomplishing every year. Well, when you have double the budget. You have double the budget. We just need to better organize ourselves. Yes, and uh, 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 the position of the of um, the Prosperity Task Force, the position of the uh, George Richard Cortez, the position of the CEO group is to help everybody work better together. That's all we want to do. I don't want to you to tell you how you're going to spend your money. That's not uh, what I'm here for. What I'm trying to say is that your money, in addition to er, er, any other EDO that is spending money for this region, if 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 you work together, you know, I like, think we're going to accomplish a lot more. So regionalism, you know, we talk about the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, what is your stance on including northern northern Tamaulipas? We have no choice. Otherwise, we are not attractive. We're competing. If you only consider the U.S. side, yeah. then you're competing with Georgia, you're competing with Tennessee, you're competing with any other region in the U.S. What makes us different is that we have the Mexican side with a very good manufacturing base. If, and, and the families, as you know, we, we have families on both sides of the border. Yeah, no, it's uh, we, we cross back and forth. We, we travel internationally, you know, uh, Judge Cortez always likes to say this as well, you know, so you can go to Mexico City, uh, an hour flight from McAllen, and Mexico City is bigger than New York City. You can take an hour flight from, you know, McAllen, Reynosa, and get to Monterrey. Monterrey's bigger than Los Angeles. I mean, our location and 
uh, having these two cities an hour away, that one bigger than Los Angeles and one bigger than New York, and that money does flow to the Rio Grande Valley. Money from Monterrey, money from Mexico City, it definitely flows. I would say over the last decade, it's started to flow to different places like um, San Antonio. People are, are, are saying, hey, we're not going to the border anymore. We're going to the next big city. But how do we continue relationships and to bring what made us, what made McAllen was families coming every year from Monterrey and Mexico City. I mean, don't you agree? No, yes, and, and Mike Allen, when he started with the McAllen Economic Development Corporation in, and, and Keith Patrick, what they set out to do was to bring business to Reynosa. And they understood that if Reynosa grew with the manufacturing manufacturing sector, that uh, McAllen was going to get a benefit of it. And it did happen. Yeah, That's the reason McAllen grew. That's the reason that my business grew. And that's the reason that everybody was making money here in the valley. Now let's keep it that way. We need to uh, uh, we need to include Northern Tamaulipas in every decisions that we make. We need to include in the branding the northern part of Mexico. That's who we are. Yeah. I mean, just go back in history. Back in 1754, all the land grants were given along the Rio Grande Valley from the Virrey to different families along the border. But it was not a border back then. It was just the... the Porciones. Re- Porciones. So, and they, it didn't matter back then that it was the U.S. side or the Mexican side. It was the delta of the, of the Rio Bravo. Um, it, it is a region. It has been a region for over 200 years. Let's keep it that way. Let's work together. Let's keep on being attractive. Let's be more attractive yes. for the rest of the world. We are, uh, 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 like Kid used, used to say, is is one region with two nations. Yeah, and and that population, uh, you know, I, I'm constantly talking to investors from outside of the area, and they talk to us about the demographics, and I constantly have to educate them, like, we have a million people on the other side that, that business goes and flows back and forth. But it's really difficult because if you're not used to being on the border and understanding how two economies work, and on top of that, the news, you know, you turn on CNN or Fox News and they talk about the border. It's not necessarily helpful. There's a lot of hurdles that we have to overcome. I believe, and I'm biased, but we have one of probably the best quality of lives in cities or region in, in the United States. We've got the best uh, weather, right, year-round, parks, our, our school districts. But for whatever reason, that message is never broadcasted. On the national publications, they're always talking about the border, immigration. How do we get past that? No, but that's what we're doing. You need to rebrand yourself. Because every time you hear in the national news about Brownsville, McAllen, Harley, they're talking about problems that we have. So how do you separate the immigration issues with uh, uh, what you just said, the great quality of life and the great trade uh, uh, and industry that we have down here? You need to separate both. So you keep on selling worldwide McAllen. If you are a Chinese guy that Google McAllen, the first thing you're going to see is something negative. Yes, because it's already been decades like that. Decades of bad press. Uh, the rest of the U.S. and the rest of Mexico, they don't understand how well we do that here. And instead of uh, trying to uh, offset the bad press that we have had all these years, unfair uh, press that we've had all these years, yeah. if we rebrand it, that's what uh, uh, Real Flex. Ciudad Juarez did. They rebrand it with Border Plex. If we rebrand ourselves with Rio Plex, then whenever they go with Rio Plex, the idea is that everything they see is yes. going to be positive. Yes. Yes. So uh, uh, I, we cannot control CNN and we cannot control uh, Fox. Uh, Fox or whoever. Yeah. But if, if we have a different brand for the positive things of the region, I think we're going to succeed. Real Plex, Real Plex, Real, Real Plex. Plex, Real Plex, and we like the, we like a slogan. Of course, we're gonna have a lot of different slogans, but we have a slogan that is is a USMCA 
French shoring capital. So that what we're trying to convey is here is where you need to be if you are trying to invest in North America. You need to be in the Valley. You're going to control the three markets, Canada, U.S., and Mexico, out of exactly the same region. We are in the middle of the uh, of the that great explosion that the USNCA has been. That's a big target, a big pool of people. When you target specifically like that, UMCA, hey, when you're trying to target North America, this, this, is, the is, this is the place. Wow. So June 19th, you all are having a, uh, a meeting, the CEO group. What is, what is on the agenda that day? Well, basically, um, it's a... Um, we're having a meeting on June 19 with a lot of businessmen, a lot of leaders, a lot of very successful people that participate with the CEO group. Um, I'm very humble uh, to be working with all these great leaders. And the agenda is how can we, how are we going to organize the private sector to support the public sector? That's basically what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I don't want to get into the details of what, what what's going to be mentioned that date, but um, the, a lot of it has to do with the branding. A lot of it has to do with how we're going to um, uh, ho help uh, both sides of the region to to market that branding worldwide. More than money, I think we need to uh, get better organized. Let's let's talk about some numbers. Let's say that you have 300, 300 people working in the Economic Development Corporation. Let's say that you have another thousand people working at the banks. Yeah. Let's say that you have, let's say, 300,000 300, people working in the ISDs. The schools, yeah. The schools, the universities. Uh, and that's just on the USA. Yeah. That's just on the Rio Grande Valley. What if each one of them will promote the branding? Every time you're sending an email, what if everyone in the private and the public sector starts pushing the brand? Rioplex. Rioplex. How far can we go? Together. Together, we can go everywhere. And suddenly, you're going to have a massive structure of uh, people communicating with the rest of the world, promoting a region, promoting a new brand. And that's what we think we need to accomplish on June the 19th. So on to uh, industrial development. Talk to us about the projects you have going. How is uh, your your McAllen Industrial Park? And I know you have some other projects in the pipeline. Yeah, we 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 have a company called C CIL Capital, and we have been investing through the years in industrial development. We did a small thirty, what it's called a pocket park, pocket industrial park, in far 30, 30 acres. We should be, we finally finished the, the subdivision process and we should start with the building uh, anytime, probably within the weeks. And then we have a... How big of a building? Yeah, 142,000. It's a cross dock building. It's a little bit different to what you normally see down here. We have 70 doors. Um, I think it's going to be quite successful. And then we have 120 acres uh, in the, what we call McAllen Near Shore in Industrial Park in the corner of Idela and Ware Road. Um, 70 acres have already been sold. Wow. Um, it's looking extremely positive. We have phone calls every day. Um, I think it's going to be extremely successful. We bought a piece of land in Brunswick. So we are building 200,000 square feet. Um, about a mile away from the port. Wow. Um, uh, we are very enthusiastic about it. Uh, we bought land in Harlingen, uh, 15 acres in the Harlingen Industrial Park. And we bought some land in Edinburgh, 11 acres in the north Edinburgh that's Industrial right. Park. So that's the reason I promote the region because I have investments all over the region. And as you know, uh, we we have a lot of warehouses in West Laco. We have a, warehouses in Alamo. We have a, a 
uh, properties in Raymondville. Uh, we have properties all over the valley. And, and it's, our, it's of my best interest to help coordinate the private and the public sector to promote the region and, and promote all these industrial sites. No? Yeah, and, and on our last um, podcast, I, we sat down with Marco, Marco Silva, and I said, I don't want to be laughed at for saying this, but I think South Texas is going through a renaissance. You called it an industrial revolution. I, I'm saying it's a renaissance in the sense that, you know, we're collaborating, we're working together. A lot of organizations have their own agenda, but they're figuring out how to come together to meet the same mission. You have um, the RGV partnership bringing together all of these cities. You have CoStep bringing together act- with their site selection process, bringing actual outside people and saying, hey, look at the region, right? And I I think in five, 10 years, 20 years, we're going to look back and this is going to be a totally different place. And it it it's going to be different because people like you are are making the impact. And like you say, you're, you know, you're addicted to deals. You know, this is just yeah. the next deal, right? Yes. And, and having all the, the, the different leaders in the private sector getting involved, I think that that's going to help make things happen. Yes. You need to work together. Yes. We cannot wait for the city to solve our lives. No. We cannot wait for the city officials, the local government officials to solve everything for us. No. We, we need to help them. We need to work with them and we need to solve uh, the marketing issues together. The private sector supporting the public sector. It, it's very rare that you hear that. No, we're here to help the EDOs. It's, I go back to what we say in my office. It's not what you can, the EDO can do for us. It's what we can do for the EDOs. Because sometimes the private sector has, have solutions that the, that the public sector don't have. For example, let, let's talk about a specific uh, situation. I have offices in, Mexi- in Mexico City and Monterrey. And whenever an um, economic development corporation needs to do a, a, a mission to Mexico, Monterrey, we always help. You give them space to yes. meet, host. Yes, we help from the, the logistics to the connections. I have, I have a full-time government relations uh, director, and we help them in any way we can. And, and that's the spirit. Yeah. Okay, if, if, if you are doing good, if the EDO is being successful, I am being successful. So it's a matter of uh, having the right attitude and say, hey, uh, hey uh, uh, we're here to help, uh, uh, um, and that's, that's the spirit. Mr. Spammer, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, as always. 